Did you know? Insomniac Games were presented with the opportunity to work alongside Marvel, but on the condition that they treat the project like a first-party PlayStation title. This offer was brought up by Sony's Connie Booth, a longtime executive producer and friend of the studio who'd been pitching to partner up with Marvel for quite some time. Insomniac CEO Ted Price told Game Informer, When Connie approached us with that opportunity, I started asking around here and in Insomniac and said to various people, what do you think? We never worked on somebody else's IP before, is this something that would interest you? I expected people to say, eh, that's not what we do. But the reaction was, are you kidding? Of course we want to work with Marvel. Instead of forcing Insomniac to make a game for a specific IP, Marvel actually asked the studio which franchise they'd most want to work with. The studio almost instantly chose Spider-Man. Price said that one of the reasons was, One of our favorite aspects of game making is to inject humor into our games, and what's great about Spider-Man and Peter Parker is that they both have a great sense of humor. This element of humor can also be seen with the studio's last game, Sunset Overdrive. Interestingly, Spider-Man was actually built on the Sunset Overdrive game engine, albeit slightly modified. When drafting up the game's story, Insomniac didn't want to adapt the specific Spider-Man tale and instead chose to make their own. Co-writer Christos Gage said, We're doing our own thing. We don't have to worry about all the other stuff. Let's just do the best, most iconic Spider-Man story we can do. Christos went on to say that making their own story during development was liberating, as licensed games are usually tied to external projects and have to be linked to one another. The writing staff worked closely with Marvel's executive creative director, Bill Roseman, on the game's overall story and themes. Roseman suggested that the best Spider-Man stories revolved around the conflict between the life of Peter Parker and his alter ego. Thus, the writing team decided to set the game in Peter's turbulent early 20s. Lead writer John Paquette estimated that the team wrote upwards of 800,000 words for the game's script. However, just around half of that made it into the final game, as the team ruthlessly cut out any story element they felt wasn't working. Still, Paquette claims that the game's finalized script is equivalent to a 3,333-page novel. One aspect of the game's lengthy script can be attributed to the numerous one-liners the writers had to come up with. Gage compared writing for the game to his experience with comic books, saying, There are infinitely more one-liners. For example, there's a bit where Spider-Man jumps into a fight between two other factions that are his enemies, and they're fighting each other, and he says something to the effect of, Guys, I know how we can settle this. Dance off. Imagine coming up with 1,000 of those. However, for all that the writing team put into the game, Paquette lamented that no matter how hard he tried, Roseman absolutely refused to let Mary Jane or Spider-Man say the words BALLS under any circumstance, saying, For some reason, Bill always said, No, no, take that out. Insomniac's art team spent a great deal of effort rationalizing the design of their original Spidey suit. Art director Jacinda Chu revealed that the blue areas of the suit are supposed to give Spider-Man the most flexibility, featuring paneling similar to modern athletic sports gear. Meanwhile, the red areas are made of a thicker material for more reinforcement, and are a place where Spider-Man is most likely to get hit or scrape against buildings. Finally, the white on his gauntlets, feet, and chest is actually a flexible carbon fiber, perfect for landing and blocking blows in a fight. Speaking of combat, Insomniac didn't want the game to be just a simple brawler, and aimed to create a combat system that was more movement and ability driven, that didn't simply rely on combos. Moreover, the team tried to capture Spider-Man's improvisational style by encouraging players to experiment with his capabilities as well as the environment. Creative director Brian Intahar mentioned that the focus on combat experimentation ultimately made the game feel even more like a sandbox. Still, the team hoped the design philosophy and the game's progression system would allow players to feel like a hero right away, but would eventually go on to be an even greater one as they master the game, hence the game's tagline, Be Greater. Voice actor Yuri Lowenthal, known for such roles as Ben Tennyson from Ben 10 and Sasuke Uchiha of Naruto, didn't believe he'd be chosen to voice Spider-Man after experiencing some mild eternal resistance at Insomniac. 
Lowenthal explained in an interview. Everyone was like, well, he's done other stuff for us and we can't have him do Spider-Man because he just did the lead of Sunset Overdrive, and that's the guy he does, and that's not Spider-Man. However, John Paquette defended the choice to have Lowenthal audition for the role by saying they wouldn't have brought him in if they didn't think he could do the job. Paquette's sentiments weren't misplaced either, as this wasn't Lowenthal's first time voicing Spidey. In fact, he'd been cast as the web-slinger in games such as Marvel Pinball, Marvel Super Hero Squad Online, Spider-Man Unlimited, and the mobile version of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Nevertheless, Lowenthal didn't get his hopes up, assuming he'd get turned down in favor of somebody else. He was thrilled when he got the role, and has since called it his favorite game to work on since voicing the Prince in The Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. The team's attention to detail can be seen in the voice acting. Multiple recordings were made for Spider-Man's dialogue, one in a regular tone of voice and one for when he's exerting himself while web-slinging. You said a mouthful, Doc. Take care. You said a mouthful, Doc. Take care. Although Insomniac's Spider-Man presents an incredibly well-realized world, it did pull much of its foundations from early 3D Spider-Man games. Spider-Man on the PlayStation was developed by Neversoft and was made using the Tony Hawk Pro Skater engine. The game seems to acknowledge this as it contains billboards advertising Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. If Spider-Man swings by one of these signs, he'll say, Tony Hawk, hey, I skated with that guy. Besides promoting Pro Skater 2, which came out a month after Spider-Man, this was also a nod to Spidey being a secret playable character in Tony Hawk 2. Vicarious Visions, Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro was a direct sequel to Neversoft's original title and arguably had a more interesting development period. Enter Electro was originally planned to release on September 18, 2001, just a week after the World Trade Center terrorist attacks of September 11th. The final sequence of the game originally took place on two towers which were implied to be the World Trade Center buildings, which would have certainly raised a few eyebrows. Due to this, the game's publisher Activision announced they'd be delaying the game a whole month out of respect for the 9-11 victims and their loved ones. However, the game was already completed before this announcement was made, and copies of the title leaked into circulation. This made it possible to compare the original and post-9-11 versions of the game. Four of the game's levels were renamed, with the most notable change of the top of the world being renamed to the best laid plans. This is the level that originally featured the two towers, but in the final game they were melded into one by a bridge. The game's end and several other references to the towers were also changed. The multi-platform Spider-Man title based on the first movie, which was released in 2002, also had a few changes during and after production. Originally, actor Josh Keaton was brought in to voice the old webhead early in the game's life. However, Activision managed to get Tobey Maguire to sign on to the project a bit later. They then made the choice to put Toby front and center in the lead role, unfortunately replacing Keaton. It's not all bad, as they did make use of Keaton's talents elsewhere, as he was cast as Harry Osborn and was featured in the game's extensive New Game Plus mode where he controlled the Green Goblin. Keaton would then go on to voice Spider-Man in both the Spectacular Spider-Man TV series, Ultimate Spider-Man in Shattered Dimensions, and also played Electro in Spider-Man for the PS4. If the player enters the cheat code Girl Next Door, they can play as Mary Jane Watson. At the end of the game, where Spider-Man and Mary Jane usually kiss, Mary Jane will kiss herself. Having what is perceived as a lesbian kiss in an E-rated game caused a mild controversy, and Activision re-released the game without the cheat code. This isn't the only cheat-related secret in Spider-Man games. If the player enters Lad Neck in the 2000 Spider-Man game on PS1, they'll unlock Debug Mode. This is a reference to one of the game's main programmers, Kendall Harrison. Not only that, but if the player enters an incorrect phrase into the cheat menu, it will just simply reset. However, if you were to input a swear word as a cheat, Spider-Man will appear and just change it into something nice like flower, puppy, or spice. This is also true for the game's sequel Enter Electro. Both these early PlayStation 1 games also had a special what-if mode that can only be accessed via cheats. 
This mode offers alternative takes of what could have been and features additional content. If the player enters this mode and goes into the waterfront warehouse level, they can find one of many easter eggs. In a crate near the start of the level, it's possible to find the Ark of the Covenant, a historical relic which is a central plot device in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. More interesting references can be found in the 2004 Spider-Man 2 game. When the player has a showdown with Mysterio in a burning theater, about three minutes into the mission, the fishbowl-headed villain will utter, which is the magical phrase Bruce Campbell's character Ash uses in Army of Darkness, another Sam Raimi movie. Later on in the same mission, a cutscene will trigger where Mysterio is leaving the theater and he'll say, You have no chance to survive. Make your time. This is a reference, of course, to the infamously bad English localization of the game Zero Ring, where the main villain, Katz, states, All your base are belong to us, you have no chance to survive, make your time. The Easter eggs and references continue on in Spider-Man for the PS4, as Insomniac went out of their way to stuff as many of them into the game as they could. For example, references to the Marvel Cinematic Universe can be found littered throughout New York City, such as Avengers Tower, located in the Upper East Side, Doctor Strange's Sanctum Santorum in Greenwich Village, Jessica Jones's alias Investigations, and the Murdoch and Nelson Law Firm in Hell's Kitchen, a statue of Lockjaw from Inhumans in the Financial District, and many more. Although far more subtle, there are also references to even older Marvel movies as well. At one point in the game, Spider-Man tries to stop a runaway subway train, just like Tobey Maguire did in 2004's Spider-Man 2. However, when his web line snaps, Spidey quips, that totally worked last time, directly referring to the iconic scene from Sam Raimi's movie. Speaking of which, did you know that there was originally going to be a Venom movie spin-off from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3? For more Spider-Man facts, check out the Did You Know Movies video on Venom. And if you can't get enough of the old wall crawler, be sure to check out my series, The Mediocre Spider-Mat, where I play some of the strangest Spider-Man games to have ever been released. Like the obscure and awkward point-and-click adventure game released for the greatest operating system of all time, Windows 95.